Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make a really easy and delicious ham and lima bean soup. And I know a lot of people are like, what, lima beans? I don't like lima beans. They are absolutely delicious in this soup. They are not the frozen kind, they are the dried baby lima beans that I just rinsed um, and picked out any that didn't look so good. So they're just little baby lima beans and they are so delicious. But if you don't like lima beans, that's okay. You could use a navy bean and I am sure that the soup would turn out just perfectly. So for this soup, I'm gonna use leftover ham because I happen to have six leftover hams and I need to use them up. This is a great soup for the ham bone that still has a good amount of meat on it. But if you don't have a ham bone, don't worry about it. You don't absolutely have to have one. You can make this soup with ham base and just some cubed up ham and it will be delicious. The ham base that I like to use is from Miners, and I will link to that below. You cannot get this in grocery stores that I've seen anyway, um, but it is available through Amazon, and so I will definitely provide that link for you in the video description if you wanna pick some up. This is great to have in the refrigerator or even in the freezer for those times when you want a ham and bean soup, but you don't feel like cooking the whole ham with the bone in it. So this works out really well. And the measurements that you would use for this soup, what I would do anyway, would be one teaspoon per cup of liquid and you would need five cups of water for this soup. So you could do that. But since I've cooked six hams recently, I happen to have the ham with the bone and some meat, so I'm gonna use that. I'm also gonna use the juices from the ham um, when I made it. Now, the juices, depending on what your marinade is, would depend on whether or not you wanted to use that or not. Um, but mine was pretty basic, and so the juices are just fine. If you weren't going to use the juices, use five cups of water and maybe add in a teaspoon or two of this along with your ham. And that's just gonna boost the flavor because these ham juices are full of flavor. Plus you might wanna add a little bit more salt, but you can salt to taste after the fact. All right, so there's no real prep to this at all. I mean, I have the bone here of, with the ham on it and I'm just gonna lift it up and put it right into the pot. I have one bay leaf, I'm gonna throw that into the pot two cups of the ham juices from when I cooked the ham. That's gonna go straight into the pot. I also have three cups of plain tap water that's just room temperature. Right out of the uh, faucet is fine. Or you could use bottled water. If it's colder, um, your time to pressure would be a little bit longer, but I don't think it would make any difference in this recipe. All right, so the vegetables. I have some chopped and some not, and there's a reason for that, and I will get into that in just a minute. But what's gonna go into the pot right now is one celery stalk and two, you know, medium-sized carrots. They're about this size that I just chopped up haphazardly, really. It makes no difference. I mean, they're just in little slices like this. And four garlic cloves that I've peeled and just smashed a little bit. Okay, and I'll show you the, the carrot here. They're at about half an inch slice, but I wasn't real particular because it doesn't matter. These vegetables are going in now, and by the time the pressure cook is over, you're not even gonna see them. So you might see them, but they're not gonna be uh, big chunks or anything. And then I have one Vidalia onion, and that's just because I love to cook with Vidalia onions, which are a sweeter type of onion, but you could use any onion you want. Red onion, yellow onion, white onion, Vidalia, it doesn't matter. Put that in. And now we're gonna add in our eight ounces of dried baby lima beans. And they just come in a little bag and I just rinse them and put those in. And I will stir the lima beans so that they do get underneath or you know, in the liquid itself, the ones that landed on the ham boat. I'm just gonna move into the liquid so I know that they all cook correctly. All right, perfect. All right. Um, and the last thing is just a half of a teaspoon of thyme. Now I'm not even putting any salt or anything because the juices from the ham have salt in them and the ham itself has salt in it. And I really do recommend that you salt at the end of this, not before because the, the ham will give off its salty flavor and you don't want too much salt. So this is a half of a teaspoon of thyme. And that is all I'm adding in. The ham flavors the soup so well, you do not need a lot of uh, spices. 
Now, if you liked more garlic, you could add more garlic. If you didn't like garlic, you could leave the garlic out. Those kind of things are fine. Now we put the pressure lid on. And there's two little arrows here that you line up. I haven't talked about that in a long time, so I thought I would just uh, show you guys that. Two little arrows, you line them up on the lid, and then you know you can just go right to the sealed position by turning. Turn the Ninja Foodi on, hit the pressure, high is what we want, and we're gonna go to 45 minutes. Hit start and make sure the valve in the back is to the seal position because we do want to go under pressure. Now this is a you know halfway full pot, so it's going to take a little bit of time to come to pressure, but it is a very thin liquid. I'm thinking probably about 12 minutes, but I don't know that for sure. I will let you know at when we come back um, and let you know how long it took, but I'm thinking about 12 minutes. But real quick, while that's building pressure, I did want to talk about these last little ingredients. The reason why I did not put these into the soup in the beginning is because they get overdone. The vegetables that are in there now are for flavor and flavor only. I don't expect to see much of them. They're not going to have any firmness left to them at all at the end of the 45 minute pressure cook time. So I'm reserving these out. I will slice them thinly and I'll show you that. I'll do that on camera, show you how I slice them thinly because at the end we're going to add them in and just do the sear saute for a few minutes until they're cook through and then you've got the perfect balance of flavor and texture in your soup. All right, so we just have like another 30 seconds or so of the pressure cook time. So it took about 16 minutes for the pot to come to pressure, meaning that the countdown started. The pin popped up at about minute 14, but it took another two minutes for the countdown to start. That is normal. It happens sometimes. Don't worry about that. If your pin pops up before your countdown starts, no problems. So we're gonna naturally release this for about five to 10 minutes. So while that's going on, I'm gonna get these other vegetables chopped up and I wanted to show you how I do that because they are gonna cook really fast while we take the ham bone out. We're gonna put these in, put it on high, sear saute and let them cook up and they need to cook fast. So in order for them to cook fast, they need to be cut pretty thin. What I usually do, and you can put your celery down this way so that it's on a more of a flat surface. So I just take my knife and I just go, I use a diagonal. You do not have to use a diagonal. I just do that because I think it looks pretty. And then I run my knife and I do these in about an eighth to a quarter inch slice like that. Now, if you don't want big pieces in your soup, you can always cut down the center like that. Just don't go all the way through and it will hold together nicely. And you can just go like this and just make little cuts. Again, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be on the diagonal. You could go like this. Of course, I'm moving my knife towards the food. You're supposed to move the food towards the knife. I don't always do it, but I'll try. I wish I could do it fast, but when I move the food, I can't do it fast. But anyway, all right. So there we go. Until you have the celery uh, sliced up in thin little slices. And we're going to do the same thing with the carrot. Now the carrots are round. It's a little bit, a little bit harder to do. I don't usually cut off an end, but you could. So you could cut this in half and then you could just cut off a little slice. So if you're not real comfortable with a knife, do that. Just cut off a little tiny slice and that way it will sit on your cutting board flat and it won't move around so much and you are a lot less likely to cut yourself. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna make these carrots, because carrots can take a long time. So I'm gonna make these carrots as thin as I possibly can. So about an eighth of an inch or so. I'll, I'll do it slow. I'm still moving my knife towards the food instead of the food towards the knife. All right, so you get the idea. So we're gonna do that for both carrots. Now, if some were a little bit, um, a little bit thicker than others, don't worry about it too much, but you're gonna want them to be, you know, just like they're the perfect texture in the soup. So I try to get them thin. All right, so all of the carrots and the celery are now chopped up or sliced up, I should say, and it's been about five minutes. And I feel perfectly fine with going ahead and manually releasing 
the pressure now. So five to 10 minutes is fine. Or it could go a little longer too, that won't matter. The reason why I did let it go for a little bit of natural release is not because I'm worried about the ham drying out. I'm not. It's not that I'm worried about it being too full of a pot and, and having the soup come out of the uh, valve. I'm not worried about that either. It wasn't that full of a pot. What happens sometimes when you're doing beans in a pressure cooker is if you release the pressure too fast, the beans kind of explode, basically. They fall apart. And so that's why I wanted the temperature in the pot to sort of settle down a little bit, let a little bit of the pressure out, and now I'm gonna go ahead and flip the switch. That was a lot of steam. It took a little, it took several minutes for that to release. The smell though is just amazing. And now the red button has depressed. So usually when I've got a pot of soup though that released all that steam, even after the button goes down, I'll just sort of wait maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds before opening the lid. That's just kind of something that I've started to do. All right, so now we can open this up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the ham bone out with the ham still on it because what I wanna do is get the ham off into chunks. So if the ham falls off like it's sort of falling off of mine, I'll just go in there and get it out. Put this over on the cutting board. That needs to cool just a few minutes so we can get the good ham off of there. And so now I will put in these vegetables. You can still see the other carrots that I put in, but they're not gonna have the texture that these are gonna have, which I like that texture in my soup. If you like all your vegetables really, um, really soft, then you can put them all in in the beginning and not worry about this, but I like that texture. So the other ones are gonna be really soft and these are gonna be a little bit uh, firmer. So I'm gonna put the sear saute on high and get these in. These will cook in the time that it takes for the ham to cool down and cut up, get cut up and put in here. So it's gonna be ready in probably about five or 10 minutes. Now, one other thing that I usually do right about now is give it a taste to see. All hams are different, all ham juices are different. So the seasonings are important to check, you know, see how it, how it tastes. So for that, I'm just gonna take a little, just a little ladle here. I'm not gonna worry about getting any of the vegetables really, just that broth. Put that in the bowl there and just give it a quick little taste. Mm. No, that's pretty good. It does not need any salt or anything like that. It's got a great ham flavor, so I don't need to do anything. If yours was lacking in flavor, add in some ham base, add in a little salt, a little more thyme if you need to, you know, just go ahead and do that um, so that it has a good flavor. And let's just see. The beans, I should see the beans. I think that the beans are gonna be fine. I've tested this recipe several times already, so I know the beans are fine. They like to hide at the bottom though. Yep, they are definitely soft enough. Now beans are one of those kind of funny things. And I've thought about taking the pressure cook time down on this recipe to about somewhere between 35 and 40 minutes. The reason I didn't though is because other recipes that I've put out with beans in them, they have not been cooked enough for people. So I knew this timing worked and I thought I'm just gonna leave well enough alone because the, the beans are perfect in there. They're nice and soft. If you want a little firmer bean, cut back your pressure cook time by five, seven, 10 minutes. Um, but this will work for pretty much everybody, even if you have older beans that are a little, take a little bit longer to cook up. So I think it's a good, good time frame. All right, so let's get this ham off of here. All right, so there's one ham bone. 
I'm gonna go through this. Some of it's really hot, some of it isn't as hot, so I'm gonna be careful, but I'm gonna go through this and see where the fatty parts are and where the ham is that I wanna put back in the soup and just sort of roughly chop it up. So if there's a piece of fat, I don't wanna put that in the soup. All right, that looks good. Now we can add this back in. That's all gristle, so I'm gonna get rid of that. That's jam. Piece of gristle. Ham. Ham. We got a we got a good amount of ham off this bone. I mean, you know, each one's gonna be different, obviously, but this one had a good amount of ham on it. Could also use a bone with you know very little ham and then just add in some extra ham too. That'll be fine. When I first made this soup, I also thought I was gonna take down the liquid by a couple of cups. It seemed so liquidy and I was like, this is not what, exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to be a little bit thicker. Um, like, I, you know, ham and bean soup usually is. Um, like that, you know, just that thicker consistency. But it, when it started to cool and before I served it as it sat, it thickened up so nicely. I was like, nope, I'm not changing a thing. But if you want a much thicker ham soup, you could do uh, one or two things. You could decrease the liquid by a couple of cups, that would be fine, or you could even increase the beans. So if you wanted more beans in your soup, you could double the amount of beans, keep the same ingredients the rest of the way, I'll keep the same liquid, same time frame, everything, you'll just have twice as many beans. That will work out just fine. With this recipe, there's enough liquid um, to handle that. All right, so I'm just gonna let that boil for about five minutes, clean up my cutting board, and then we will be ready to taste our ham and lima bean soup. All right, so it's been about five minutes. I was on the sear saute on high, and I gave one of the thinly sliced carrots a test, and they are done. So it is now time to serve our soup. And this makes 10 cups of soup, just so you know. Um, it's up to the 10 cup mark on the inner pot. So I'm just gonna take out some here. All right, here we go. Ladle that out. Looks really good. A little more broth. Perfect, I also fished out the bay leaf. You wanna make sure you fish that out. All right, so there we go, our beautiful ham and lima bean soup. Now let's give it a taste. Okay, so some of the lima beans are kind of broken apart. That adds to the thickness of the soup and then some are intact. This is how it's been each time I've tested. I think it's a perfect combination. But again, you could go down on the pressure cook time if you wanted to not have the beans so soft. Mmm. It amazes me every single time that I make this soup because each time it's a little bit different because the ham that I, the juices that I used from the ham was a little bit different. So each time it's a little bit different, but it's always delicious and it is amazing the flavor that you get in this soup with hardly any ingredients. That's what I love about it. It is so easy to make. Mm. Wow. The texture on the celery is fine for me. Just like a, just a tad bit of crunch there, but not too much. Um, the carrots are nice and soft, but not mushy. I love that the ham is very soft and melt in your mouth. It is absolutely delicious. I really hope you guys give this soup a try because you're gonna love it.
definitely need some bread though. You know, I need to make some bread. And, and if you wanna make bread with your ham and bean soup, you can do that. I have a homemade bread recipe and I will link to that right over there.